All right. Thanks, Patreon su- supporters, for joining us for the spoiler talk for The Grand Dirk by Richard Cadry. There's so much stuff I want to talk about. I can't believe that you were on the fence about doing spoiler talk. The only thing I could think about, and I, I guess I'll start and I'll let you run with it, is I wanted to say that I actually put a note exactly 51% of the way into the book that was wrong. But it was my note saying, Remy is a chimera. So yeah, you were close. So yeah, I wasn't far off, but but I did. I <laughs> um I did. I don't remember exactly. Oh, it was when uh uh the fortune teller does refuses oh, to tell so her fortune. Empty. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um and and, and just kind of cuz at that point she kind of just refuses. She just doesn't say why. Later on, right. she says that it was like she was empty, but that's like 80% of the way into the book, but I was like, "Oh, I see what this is going. This dude hooked up with a chimera." And uh, that's that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I wasn't far off, but I, I was so proud of myself. And and then I was glad when I was wrong, because if I can tell you the ending of a book, the twist in a book at 50% in, I'm going to be a little disappointed. Well, let's talk about that a little, because I felt like um, I felt like there were plenty of things that I figured out the thing before the thing happened. And I want to see if you did. Um, so like going back toward the beginning of the book, um, after he gets his promotion, he's sent on all these um, special jobs, and the moment he gets, the moment he notices that he keeps getting handed new books, mm-hmm. like the receipt books, I was like, oh, A, they're looking for fingerprints, was mm-hmm. my absolute first thought. B, Bronco works for the Nachtvogel, and, and C, they're using him as an unwitting spy, like... Uh, immediately yeah. i thought that i had i had the same thoughts i wasn't settled on the knocked vogel but the other two yes i wasn't sure what bronca's role was and the reason i say that is at times i felt like he came across and i, I think Kadri did a really good job with this he came across as stern but that like i want good things for you stern Right. Where I thought, I'm not sure who he's playing for. He's obviously playing for someone. And yeah, I mean, fingerprints or DNA was my other thought on the on the books. Yep. Um, but I, I, I kind of thought that Bronca might come out on the other side as a good guy. And I thought that all the way up until the point when Largo put bullets in him. <laughs> so, like, I kept thinking. <laughs> you wanted him to be the the redeemable bad guy? Yeah, the gruff fatherly figure. You know yeah. what I mean? Where where he because kind of, you could tell there are parts where you could tell he likes Largo, you know, and mm-hmm. he just wants you know better stuff for him. Even you know after we're exposed to him being knocked Vogel, I was like, all right, maybe, maybe he's still gonna pull something out. I'm like, nope, Largo fucking filled him full of lead. Wrong there. Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was the first time I was like, oh, I see what's going on here. Um. The yeah. Um. Ah oh, shit! There's other stuff I wanted to talk about. Um, the Remy stuff. I, I, I was with you on something was up with Remy because there was just too much inconsistency with the way that like her spasms were like the drops but weren't the drops, mm-hmm. and her personality was shifting so like rapidly that wasn't explained in one of the common things that happened in the story where I was like. You know, something's going on here. I didn't think it was um, like a mad science scientist, like um, sugar daddy situation, <laughs> incest, incest thing. But um, so I didn't quite get there. But yeah, I knew something was up with her. Yeah, and that character too. I was a little disappointed in the Baron. Um, it, it, again, good for the story, but you know, we're introduced to him, and I thought, oh, this is an all right guy, and and you know, he's the the magic help that shows up to get him out of trouble with the police when there's the fire at the grand dark. And I was like, okay, I see him coming in to swoop in and save the day at some other point late in this book. So I, I, again, I I wasn't disappointed in the writing. I like it when writing surprises me when it makes sense and this made sense, but with the character, I was like, Oh no, Baron, you're a goddamn douchebag. I didn't see this coming. You seemed like a great guy. Um, yeah, we felt the same way about both the Baron and, Branca, I think, like we wanted or we expected the story to go differently for them. Because you brought up uh in earlier you brought up uh a similarity to Nick Corpon's work. 
I want to bring up a massive similarity to Nick Corpon's work in this book, and that is the fact that um, the plasma power mm-hmm. com- comes from, like, essentially some sort of human essence. Sure, yeah. Which yep. is strikingly similar to, was it Queen of the Struggle? Yes, yep. Where yeah. they were using people like batteries? Mm-hmm. I guess that, I mean, it's also similar to the Matrix, so whatever. But. Right, yeah. I mean, I, and look, I'll, I'll bet you if we dug into sci fi, we'd find that's probably yeah. more common than not. <laughs> so, like. <laughs> but, like, using more of, like, the, like, a soul type of thing, I feel like, was, yeah, that's what made me think of. I was like, oh, man, this is like when Corpon wrote this thing. So. One other thing that I thought was interesting um, when he goes to hire Prozawa, however the hell you say it. I almost felt like there was almost a whole book in that. Like where somebody has to go to the place that he knows all these things about and finds out that the things aren't true. I mean, I'm not sad at the length of it or, or anything like that, but I also felt there was like a bigger story. There there are a lot of stories in this book. Yeah. Because I also at some point wished for there to be like an iron, uh, an iron, an army of iron dandies. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like in some situation where you know you look up at the street and there are hundreds of them with those fucking like iron man type masks and the fucking long like pea coats you know like marching towards somebody um which didn't happen so i mean i think that he created a, a world that um didn't just lend itself well to this book but that if he chose to there are a number of other great stories that were lightly introduced um i i totally think that um Oh fuck! What's his name? Oh, I'm sure it's in this list somewhere. Um, the, what's the the buddy? The buddy that he had that was uh, that was an Iron Dandy. Oh, it's um, Rainer. Rainer. Um, there, there's a whole story around that guy. Even his name, Rainer Fox. Yep. There's a whole book on that guy <laughs> leading the Iron Dandies to something for sure. You know what I mean? There's there's oh, so totally. much stuff in this that that could uh, that could turn into multiple novels for Kadri. Um, I think a strength of the story, now that we're, we've kind of talked about these few things, uh, ended up being that it did kind of subvert your expectations mm-hmm. um, in the examples that we gave. But also, um, I didn't think that Largo was going to turn out the way he did. Like, I, I thought he was going to find a way to kind of play the middle and just kind of skate through without picking a side. And there was just a moment where he absolutely picked a fucking side. Yeah. <laughs> and it was yep. like, so like it started with having to go to high, hire Prozawa. Prozawa? Who the fuck knows? Yeah. yeah. Um, to see if um, Remy was there. But then when he fucking just straight up executes that asshole cop, um, Tans, special operative Tans, mm-hmm. uh, that I did not see coming. And then he's just like, I'm gonna kill. I'm a killer, and he starts killing cops. <laughs> and uh, then it was on. And then he's like, Let's bomb the entire fucking show in Mashinen and stuff like that. And and he totally. But the thing I liked was he kind of chose his own side instead of allying with, um, you know, these these rebels and stuff. His own side just happened to pretty much line up with the things that these rebels were doing. Yeah, I um. I agree, and, and and I don't know if I would have come to this. There was something like tickling the back of my mind about his character. So two things. One was that his transition reminded me of, have you ever seen a movie called District 9? Uh, is it the French parkour movie? No. <laughs> it is not. Oh, no, it's the alien one, right? Right, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That, I was thinking of District B13 yeah, as a that, French parkour yeah. movie. Both great movies, I just want to say. <laughs> Um, <laughs> District Nine. You start off with this character who like works for the government, and he's you know like like the short sleeve and tie kind of guy. And by the end, he's just like a massive fucking badass. And yeah. that's kind of how I felt about Largo. And it, it took a while to to get him there. But you're right. Once it started, it was it was on. But the thing that that you brought to mind that I liked, it could have been very easy for Kadri to just say like, oh, he saw the error in his ways and joined the resistance. But he didn't. He did what a lot of people would do and work in his own best interests, which was save Remy, get revenge. Yeah. And, and I like that because to me that rings much truer than, 
all my life I've been, you know, a pussy for lack of a better term. And now, you know, I saw some posters and I saw some things happen and now I'm ready to give my life for the cause in quotes. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm yeah. really glad that Kadri didn't go that direction. Um, but that, yeah, that Largo stayed true to, you know, just the things that were important to him really. Right. Cause even when he was helping this resistance and these rebels, it was in exchange for something mm -hmm. like he, he was, he had something that he needed that they could give him and he helped them as, as kind of like barter for what he needed. So yeah, that was well done. Um, so yeah. Uh, I think that one of the themes that I think is, is now that we've kind of talked through this, that is one of my favorite parts of this book is subverting expectations. Like, either it, whether it's a character subverting the expectations of the character or the story not going the way that you expect it to. And one of the great examples is higher Prozala because like rumors just don't mean anything in this book. There was a rumor that people were being kidnapped to be slaves for, mm -hmm. you know, looting in higher Prozala. And that ended up just not being true. And in a story I think that your average author would be afraid to introduce like a false rumor as like a as a strong plot point for a book because he basically sent Largo to another country or another another city. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. On a fucking fool's errand and it took up a good chunk of the book. And all it did was say, "Oh no, that's not happening." Um and it turned him into a badass in the process. Um and so like that I think that was kind of a a, a risk that not many authors would take, but I, I, I admired it. When you put it that way, it's a, it's an excellent point. Cause it was, it was just all for nothing. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. so, but that's not the only, t that's not the only time in the book mm. that something like that happens. Yeah. Like it, it, it is multiple times where like something doesn't pan out or, or the information doesn't immediately lead to the reward or the thing that is needed to push this plot forward. Like, uh, and that was unique. I thought it was great. I really like the idea of the carnival. And it turns out to just be that he yeah. encounters this carnival so that later he can find someone hiding in a tent as a, as a fucking fortune teller. Like yes. I, I thought, oh, we're, these carnival people are going to be in on some shit. They're part of the rebellion for sure. Like there's going to be crazy carnies like fucking going up against the Nachtvogel. Which, by the way, could be in that next Kadri book that I was talking about. He could write Carnival versus Knocked Vogel. I'd read the shit out of that. <laughs> Holy shit, yeah. But, like, the fact that, like, he... And, and you're absolutely right, because at one point, he is given tickets to the Carnival, <laughs> which never pay off. No, he and actually like, loses the tickets. Who fucking does that? <laughs> Nobody does that. <laughs> Kadri does. does that, and it was fucking amazing. Yeah, he loses the tickets. Like, they're left yeah. behind his apartment. He's actually like, I wonder which <laughs> member of the Nachtvogel is going to fucking show up and use my tickets when I was going to take Remy. Now I'm sad again. Like, yep. <laughs> so. Ah, oh, so good. That was, the, and, and I think that's the strength of this story is, like, uh, the subversion of expectations uh, is just handled very well. And, and entertainingly so and in a way that um i like going against like every expectation i have the book ended up being super fascinating anyway like even though i thought that there were things that you know were gonna make it a challenge for me those things never ended up being a challenge all right that's it that's all we're gonna <laughs> say here uh, we have to go back and actually finish reviewing this book. So thank you again to all of our patrons who make this, um, you know, less tedious for us. That that dollar a month and more that you guys are contributing um, really helps. So thank you for your continued support. We'll be back uh, probably not next week. I'll be honest. If you're listening, we're doing a short story thing next week. I don't know. Eh, maybe we'll pop over and talk about one. I don't know. But I guarantee you in the near future, we'll be back.